in this. Uh, this is, ow, it's hot. This is not a uh, test gadget that Garmin sent me. All right, it has been, oh, I don't know, almost an hour of charging the Phoenix 6X Pro Solar under my lamp. Let's take a look. I put it into battery saver mode and 4%. <laughs> so if you look carefully at the graph, hardly anything. And that was, I mean, that's within, I don't know, five inches of the light source. Not much solar activity at all. Let's try a different light just for fun. So this is a different bulb. Ooh, hey, that's almost 50%, no, almost 60% efficiency. So that gives off a lot more light. So once again, depending on the bulb that you're using, you're gonna get more or less solar charging on your watch when you're indoors. And if you're wondering, does it work near a window? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. I just don't have a lot of sunlight here. Let's try a different window. We'll give it a second and boom, 100%. So we're just gonna leave it here for, I don't know, an hour? Yeah, it's 10 o'clock, I'm gonna go back to work. I'll just leave it here for an hour and see what happens. Many minutes later, let's check the sun. 4% three days still, but a lot of solar activity. Hmm, I'll come back in an hour. I've been trying to get this heat warning for quite some time and I finally got it. Whoa, is it hot? So let's bring it inside. Ow, hot, hot, hot. All right, so it's still ooh, really warm. Let's see how warm. 128, 127, tablecloth 76, table 75. So we know my gauge is somewhat accurate. Turn it over on the back case, 119. So let's go outside. Basically, what this is telling us is if your watch is really low and you just set it outside to cook in the sun, if it gets too hot, it will shut down. That says 150 degrees. That's the temperature of my railing. And the watch is at 126 and climbing. So in just a few seconds, we should get a warning. So it's been a few minutes and you can see right there on the graph that it did shut off and stop charging via solar because it got too hot. Let's check the temperature. We're at 130. The railing is 157. So probably in another minute or so, the watch is gonna stop charging again. Well, that didn't take long. About two minutes have passed Let's check the temperature. So the railing is 160 and my watch is 125 to 130 degrees. And you can see right there with the logo, well the icon, that it shuts off because of temperature. So I don't want to damage the watch. I do plan on <laughs> keeping this. Uh, this is, ow it's hot! This is not a uh, test gadget that Garmin sent me. So. Let's take it out of the sun, shall we? Now I'm inside and the watch has cooled, so we can charge it by the window and see if I can get it to even go up 1% <laughs> charging via sunlight. And inside, it still gets really good sunlight as we saw before, but it won't overheat. There we go, nice window seal. And solar intensity almost 80. I'll tilt it there for a little bit. There we go, 100%. So we'll just leave it here. It's 13.09. My lunch break is almost over. So I'll just check this when I'm done working or on my next break. And just for fun, I'm gonna charge this one too. So now we can see which one charges faster. This one is at two days or 3% and it is in energy saver mode. So 
There's the solar intensity, 4% or three days with the Phoenix. So Phoenix versus the Instinct Solar indoor charging test. Been well over an hour. I'm done with my day job now, so now I can finish this video. And well, hmm, 5%. A lot of solar activity over the last six hours. And let's see where we are on this one. Good solar activity. The solar light went down. So this one's at 4% and three days, 5% and four days. Well, looks like we're gonna have to plug them in. Interesting how different the graphs look from color on the Phoenix to the black and white on the Instinct. So right now, cloudy, overcast. It actually feels really nice. And we're still getting about 60% solar efficiency. Up, oh, dropped to 50. Yet on this one, same location. Oh, it just dropped down as well. It was at 60 and now it's down to 50, 50. This one has a larger solar panel, smaller watch face, doing less overall, and it has a much larger solar panel. So smaller watch face, smaller battery, bigger solar panel. They both have power glass. This is the older solar panel that the Phoenix has, whereas this has power glass, bigger battery, bigger screen, charges more slowly. Are we clear? And it wouldn't be one of my videos without more battery charging. So now that both of these batteries are down really low, can't believe that only went up 1% over the last almost five hours. Anyway, let's use these third party chargers that I got off Amazon to charge them both and we'll see which one charges faster. Dun, da, da, da. Yes, I know. The anticipation is riveting. And we're almost done with this test. 99% for the Phoenix. Ooh, 69. So I've been tracking everything on this Kobo Ellipse. So we started the charging test at 16.05. It's now 18.05, more than two full hours. Oh, and it just hit. Awesome. Now we can document this for posterity. And even better, it was an even number. So 100%. 80 days. Meanwhile, the Instinct, which is a smaller battery and was only 2% less charged, actually 1%, is taking forever. And I don't know why it's taking so long. So now the, the fun parlor trick, I take this out of battery saver mode. So it was 80 days. Boom, 23. And that's without Pulse OX. But still, 23 days is good. I'm, I'm happy with that. And just for fun, long press. Go down to activity tracking, move alert on, move IQ. We're gonna turn that off. Pulse OX. Actually, let's try it with just that. Huh, still 23 days. Pulse of X, we're gonna turn that on during sleep. And now what's our battery estimate? Oh, 16 days. Well, that's still full two weeks. Ah, triple charging. But then again, you know, you can always just save power and uh, turn that off. And I like the little charged logo for 100%. That's nice. So we're gonna undock this because we don't want to overcharge it. And now, yeah, it's not in airplane mode. So it's gonna sink, 5% backlight. Better test number two begins. And I'll document this later and we'll finish this video. Look at that nice pixelization. So we can test this one just real quickly while it's charging. Turn battery saver off. And we jumped to 20 days. All right. And it's finally charged actually a while ago, but I was busy with life. Still at 100% with Pulse OX, 13 days without, 28 days. 
And if I put it back into, whoops, battery saver mode, boom, we have 64 days. Meanwhile, the watch of discussion, still at 99%, 80 days. So that's good. That, that's really good because it's been over an hour and it's still 99%. But it was in battery saver mode and I'll turn that off. I just didn't want to be annoyed and I don't need to track my heart rate all the time. You know, give the watch a rest. And that's it. Let's wrap this up. Question is, what did we learn from this experiment of charging your solar watch, <laughs> your solar devices such as the Garmin Phoenix solar series and I believe also the Instinct, that's a solar one, and the Tactics Delta, another solar one, and I'm sure Garmin's going to have some more solar products really soon. When you're in direct sunlight, it gets really hot. Now, when you're wearing a watch on your wrist, your skin actually helps it cool down and then it prevents overheating. When I was swimming uh, in an outdoor pool, it was really hot and even when I was sitting on the pool deck it got really hot as well but it never overheated like it did today. So if your watch gets really low in power plug it in. Uh, Garmin actually states that they don't recommend relying completely upon solar to charge in your watch and yes when it's in direct sunlight it does get too hot. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.